Hey guys, this video is intended to show you how to use the Google Draw or the Google Drawings option to make your concept map. When you are in your Google Drive and you click New, one of the options that you have should be is Google Drawings. And it's not shown here with the docs, the sheets, the slides, but if I continue on under the More, it appears. Once you open up Google Draw, what you see is this background screen with these squares of gray and white. That tells you that there's no actual background, that it's a transparent background. First thing you should do is title your document. Let's call this um, Classifying Matter Map, because it's your concept map, and then do underscore last space first. The reason I like this Google Draw is because you are able to create this concept map completely electronically and share it with me electronically also. One of the things you're going to want to add in your concept map where you organize matter in a meaningful way are boxes. Concept maps contain boxes with sometimes text and adding a text box by clicking the T is also very simple. Very easy to increase the size of your text or decrease the size of your text and increase or decrease the size of the box. You can also increase or decrease the size of this box that you build. If I go to any one of these um, boxes on the side, I can make this bigger, I can make it smaller, I can change the proportions. If you hold, if you notice when you click on this bottom right corner here, you'll see a single arrow. And that single arrow means I can change both the height and the width at the same time, changing the proportions both at the same time. But let's say you really like the proportion that you have and you just want to make this box bigger or smaller, but keeping the same you know, length and width ratios. When you go to this bottom corner and you get the single arrow, click your shift key and what you'll notice is you can no longer change the XY proportion, it maintains that ratio for you. So once you have the right ratio and all you want to do is change the size, go ahead and hold down the shift key as you're doing this. Another thing that you're going to use this concept map for is to build atoms and molecules. For this, I would choose a circular shape. And I'd also like colors. This right here is the pen that goes to the outside of the circle, the line on the outside. If I were to leave it black, right, it would have be a black line or black border around it. This right here is the fill color. When I filled it with red, you'll notice that the black line on the border is still there. If I would like to turn that border red also, I would have to go back and click the outside border. Now it's completely red. In order to save time, once you have an atom of the size that you like, you can do a duplicate. That reproduces it. And then you can simply move it to wherever you want. If I wanted an atom of a different color, notice when I did this, that red line appeared between them. That tells me that they are, their centers are aligned. And if I let it go, they align very well across the center. Let's say I wanted to represent a molecule that is bonded. I can do it in one of two ways. I can show these two physically touching, or what's also acceptable is putting a bond in between them. To do that, I might not, you could do a line, but I kind of prefer using the, um, these rectangles again, because then I can make them as thick as I want very easily. So I have my bond that I'm going to add between these two, and let's go ahead and make this bond black. I click away and I notice that the line is now in front of these, um, the red balls, and I don't like that so much. I'd like that to be behind. If I click again on the line and I go to Arrange, 
order, I can send that line to the back behind these two. Now it looks more like the molecule I was hoping it was going to be. When I'm happy with the, the arrangement here, what I could do is select all by drawing a box around with my arrows selected and then arrange group. And what this will do is this means that all of these are now one thing. I could ungroup them if I wanted to, but for now I'm going to leave them grouped. So if I leave them grouped, when I move this around, I can put it inside this box, I can take it out. I can also, holding my shift key down, make it bigger or smaller. If I don't hold my shift key down and do this, of course, remember, I can change the proportions also. If I like what I have here, I will leave it together as a group. Now, let's say I want to draw something else. And I want to do one of these circles a different color. What I will do first is edit duplicate. So I leave my first one alone. And I now have these all grouped as one. So if I were to actually select the color black, every single thing in there goes black. So I'm going to control Z and go back and undo what I just did. I just want this one to be black on the right. So often ungrouping is what you might want to do. So if I ungroup, I can now select these as individual items. Change this to black. Maybe I'd like it blue. I want the outside of this blue also. So I click the line. So now I have something different. One might represent an element and one of these might represent a compound. If I like what I have, I'll probably go back and group these so that I can move them all together. Arrange, group. And now I can move them to wherever I would like. You're going to be making a concept map, as the instructions tell you, that arrange the matter or the terms that you're given from least to most specific. And as the instructions also indicate, I want four of these terms not just represented in words, but also pictorially. And those four things are compounds, elements, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. Those four things, I'm going to have to, I'm going to require that you make drawings that go with them. You do not need to make drawings for substances or matter. One more thing you're going to want to use probably are arrows. You can fill arrows in with any color you want. Let's make this green. And some of these arrows are going to have to be labeled. As the instructions indicate, where appropriate, some arrows are going to have to have labels such as physical means or chemical means. Now you can label those and put the actual terms in the arrows or above the arrows. Not all arrows will require you to label them, but there will be at least one arrow that requires physical means and one arrow that requires chemical means. These arrows represent substances changing into another. The left side of the arrow represents what it starts as and what you put on the right side of the arrow represents what you're changing it to. So if one thing can be converted to another via physical means, you would have the one thing that's starting out on the left and what you're converting or breaking it down into on the right. How you arrange and make this concept map is completely up to you, but I do require that things are labeled and that four terms, compounds, elements, mix, um, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures also have pictures associated with them. When you are ready to share this, you're going to do it via the instructions. There are several ways you could do it, but please follow the method detailed in the instructions. 
I can show you by clicking share here, what you'll get is a link to this document. Perhaps your instructor wants you to share the link. This copy and paste is what you would do with this address. And anyone who goes and clicks on this link will come to this page. There are other ways in which you might be asked to share this. You might be asked to share it also um, by clicking this button. If you click this button, anyone with the link can view this. You can make it public on the web. If you're sharing the link, most likely that is what you're going to click. This concludes how to use Google Draw. Please be sure to read the instructions to ensure that you're following and doing everything you're expected to do in terms of this concept map. Good luck.